So how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm not too bad at all. Not too bad. The weather's not too good here. But you're, are you um, East Coast, LA? Uh, East Coast, New York? Yeah. Or? New York right now, yeah. Right. Okay. What's the weather like out there now? Nice or? It's not too bad. Yeah. Yesterday was about 70. Of course, we do Fahrenheit. So it wasn't too bad. It's pretty sunny. <laughs> not yeah, too cold. Yeah. Like jacket weather. <laughs> So it wasn't like when you were filming in Wales then, when you shot back in 2019 or 20, not as cold as that, eh? Yeah, it was so cold. But the, the cold wasn't the issue. It, it was trying to film and beat the sunlight or, or beat the sunset for that matter. Um, yes. We were kind of on this race against time with the sun setting and the sun rising. And we only had daylight from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m., which is a very, very, very short shoot day. So that was the biggest challenge that we had. But we were able to successfully get all the shots in. And I don't think we really even went over. I think we wrapped on time. And yeah. Yeah. So when you see in the film, obviously, when the guy, the boy is in the room and he's so cold, I guess that was quite real as well, because it won't be so cold. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was definitely freezing. They were they were in shock because like <laughs> these guys have never even left their village, let alone India. So for them to actually, I mean, they've seen it in films and TV shows and things like that, but then to experience it, they were like, "Oh, this is no joke." But they were true. I mean, they were out on set all day, and you saw their, you know, their uniforms are short sleeves and shorts and just socks, and they were they were troopers because they were able to sustain throughout the entire filmmaking process without, you know complaining or really getting sick or anything like that so yeah. um i spoke to Stuart yesterday and he was telling me about the coat you lent him because he, he, he was so cold himself and then you lent him your white coat didn't you with the fur thing on yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we even had i remember for the boys we had um it was these uh what's it called it's like an insulated blanket yeah so they they had never seen those before either. So they were like, what is this? And they're like, I, I was explaining it to them. I was like, we do this in the north, nor- or the western side of the world, I should say. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a proper feel-good film, isn't it? Um, and was that one of the reasons what drew you towards it? Because I don't think, I mean, you from obviously being American, I know you've got Scottish heritage, and um, but rugby for you probably wouldn't be your go-to sport of having knowledge about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm really into American football, like the NFL. Um, and I like to watch soccer, as you guys call it, football yeah. uh, here. But rugby is definitely not a popular sport in America whatsoever. We do have, you know, the um, sevens tournament and we do have a couple of pretty big tournaments in the U.S. And I was able to shadow a sports physio during the sevens tournament in Denver, Colorado, which I hear is like one of the bigger ones. Um, they have all the different countries come out and compete. And even the Army and the Navy of the U.S. also has their own rugby team. So, yeah, with that being said, it's not a very dominant sport in America. But at the same token, I think it is kind of growing and building its community whether that's in the states or in india so when you mentioned your prep for the film was that when you, you did that be, way before or, or before you when you when you got off of the role did you sort of do some research by attaching yourself to some of these teams or was it a case you did it when you knew filming was just about to start did you get it in was it months before um yeah it was we i kind of came on about i want to say six or seven months before we actually started filming so it was okay. pretty near the start of the shoot date mm-hmm. um but I, I did shadow a very, very good sports physio. She's the best in North America. Her name is Purvi Desai, and she's an Indian woman as well. She actually just opened her own uh, clinic in Denver, Colorado itself. But she she was the main sports physio, rugby physio for that sevens tournament. And so, uh, yeah, I, I shadowed her, her for about a week, um, learned the ins and outs about not only the game, but how a sports physio doesn't just kind of physio on the field. They're also physioing these boys after the game is over and off the field. And of course, if knock on wood, hopefully none of your boys get a concussion. But if they do, then how to treat that and how many days it takes to treat a concussion and what exactly are the protocols after that? Because it's it's different with every sport. You know, if you get a concussion in the NFL, those protocols are different than rugby. So, um, yeah, just learning all the ins and outs about it and how to just like be so quick with it. You know, rugby such a fast and um, it's not like the NFL where the NFL stops a lot. It, rugby is <laughs> go, go, go. And you've got to have your eyes on those boys at all times. So it was very different than what I'm used to, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, I, I was able to shadow her and learn the ins and outs. And have you kept up your your love of the sport since you did the film, or have you sort of got back into your NFL sort of stuff? <laughs> I've got back into my NFL sort of stuff, but anytime I am in the UK and I do see a rugby game going on, I do stop and watch it. And I'm like, wait a second, we got to watch this rugby game, especially if it's you know the World Tournament or anything. So yeah. yeah. 
And, and, I, and I presume you didn't know about the story. I didn't know about the story about the boys winning. I, I never even heard of it. I mean, I lived in Wales. I was in Wales at the time. I actually, when you were filming in Bridgen, which is about maybe about seven miles from my house. So it's only just around the corner. You know, that oh. was, I was down in Calethi as well, but okay. you shot something in Bridgen, but I, I didn't know about it at all. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because, you know, I thought, oh, I'm, maybe I'm just American. So that's why I've never heard of the story. But actually, when I went to India to develop the story even further, I realized that nobody in India had even heard of this. And the reason one of the biggest reasons being was that that same exact year, India won the World Cricket Cup. And so all of the media attention and focus went on to that. And these boys didn't get the light, excuse me, that they deserved or, you know, that they had worked so hard for us. So I felt like it was kind of our social responsibility to pick the story up and create it. I did, I did see that at the end of the film when it was showing you when they had the airport scene and, and they, exactly. they thought they were getting out and it was so disheartening. But also the boys still appreciate it because they were getting welcomed by the people they loved anyway. But you know yeah. what I mean? And it's a shame, but. Yeah. So what was it like working with the boys? Because I know they're all rugby players through and through, but they weren't actors. So for yeah. you being an actress, you know, obviously with the directors and the rest of the crew, what, what was it like working with such, I'd say newbies, but you know what I mean? I, I, well, I even say amateurs, but they're not amateurs because they're rugby players. But do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, you know what? I think as kids in general, you kind of don't have this idea of what the world will think of you. And I don't think you have that boundary that I guess adults do, or you're um, a little bit more cautious or more conservative in what you do and what you say. So I feel like as children, you kind of just have this open and free type of energy. And I think that obviously helps a lot with acting. Um, and, you know, when we had auditioned these boys, we looked at who had the most confidence, who was super outgoing, um, who had very, um, it was very connected to the industry or maybe had these expressions or facial expressions or scenes that they had memorized from famous Bollywood films. So that's kind of how we went about the audition process. So honestly, working with them on set, they were just so, you know, we, as Westerners, we take a lot of things for granted and they take nothing for granted. Like every single thing that they say, they do, they consume, whether it's physically or mentally, they're so entirely grateful for. So to have that type of gratitude on set, whether they're good actors or not, was something that you kind of just like, you, it's, it's really a breath of fresh air, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because it's yeah. really hard to come across, especially on a film set where you have actors and actors do have big egos at the end of the day. It's the truth. So when you are working with these kids that have literally come from nothing, like the poorest of poorest families or a lack thereof, and they come on set and they're working really hard, they're not complaining, they're super grateful. It's like, I don't have anything to complain about. Seriously. I mean, if they're just showing up and doing their job and they're having, you know, the time of their lives and enjoying themselves and even being professional for that matter, what do I have to complain about? So it kind of puts a lot of things in perspective for that matter. And yeah, they were super professional. We never had an issue with them. They're so respectful. It's funny because, you know, I would joke with the other EP that we would have the boys that were from the UK or maybe, you know, on the Germany team or South Africa team, we'd have them in a specific room in the green room before we take the shots. And then we'd have the Indian boys in the other room. And you should see the difference in how the boys left the room. The Indian boys left it pristine. Like it was not even used or touched. Everything was in the garbage. There was no mess. And then you see the Western boys and their room and it's like the complete opposite. So it just, yeah, it's little, little things like that. You notice when you're on set and working with them. And, and it's and it's funny you say that because I, I think in the, the they just take it for granted those that are not on the western side of the world, you know, and western nations and stuff. They just take it for granted. It's just there. Whereas, like you say, the boys that have the Indian boys and they, they respect things more, you know, because yeah. they just they want to be there. They're, in, they're enjoying why they're being there, but they're not taking the mick, you know. And it's yeah, it's it's rewarding for you. I know you're an executive producer, like you said. Um, can I just ask you, when were you were you involved more as an ex-EP first or was it the actress first or, or was it both at the same time? You know, I was involved as an EP first and that's how I came on. I read the script and I realized that there was a couple of elements missing. So I was more on the creative side when it came to the executive producing. Um, I helped do the rewrites of the script. I okay. helped develop characters a bit more and then even after I didn't take the EP part so much on set while I was acting because I focused more on acting and we had another incredible EP her name is Rubina Dote um, who was kind of handling the production side of it but while we were filming for that matter but then after I was also in on the edits the cuts of the scenes the subtitling like all that subtitling you see wow. a lot of it written so yeah I was more on the creative side of the EP <laughs> 
so what did you enjoy the most then um, of, of being involved in this project? Was it the actual, well, everything you've did or was it just the certain things that you did enjoy the most? I think it was being on set with the boys again, because for that matter of just, you know, like, again, you take so much for granted and then you see these boys and you hear their stories and where they've come from. Like one of the lead character of the film, you'll see him. He's such an incredible actor and I wish he would continue acting, but he's, um, he's right now training to be in the Indian army actually. But, um, you know, just hearing his story, I remember we were in between takes and of course, you know, Wales, gloomy weather at the time of the year in November, December, we had to wait for the clouds to pass by. So that way we can get our good uh, continuity shot. And it didn't look like, you know, the weather drastically changed in a matter of seconds. But so we were waiting for the clouds to pass by. And I remember turning around, it was like our first or second day, on, maybe the second or third day on set. But I remember turning around and I said, so tell me your story. I was saying this in Hindi, but I said, tell me your story. Where did you come from? And it was probably not a good time to ask them that while we were in the middle of taping. Um, but they ended up telling me their story. And one of, you know, the one of the lead story was that his parents or his mother, for that matter, dropped him off at a train station. And when he, he was a baby um, or a toddler for that, you know, and, and um, he never saw her after that. And a priest from a Catholic school found him and he kind of told him, he said, I don't know, my mom left me here. She said she's going to be back, but it's been about a day. So she hasn't come back. So the priest took him to the nuns and then they, they accepted him in the school and kind of helped him that way. And um, he grew up in that school and then graduated and then started playing rugby for Paul Walsh, who kind of, again, took him in and helped raise him as well. And then, you know, he became a captain for the rugby team and he was one of the instructors as well. And now he's training for the Indian army. So it's stories like that, you know, where it's like, those moments matter to me more than what my acting preparation was or more than my creative side or anything like that. Those moments that I got on set with those boys are something that I know I'll probably never experience again. And I'm so grateful to have had them because I felt like it kind of gave me an opportunity to play a, a, a big sister role in their lives yeah. and for them to teach me how to show more gratitude and be more grounded. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say it makes you more grounded as a person because, you know, you like you said before, you could be having a, you didn't say the shit, but if you're having a shit day, then you sort yeah. of meet people like that and you're thinking that there's having a shit day and then there's having a, you know, yeah. a proper, proper it, real shit day or shit life. And it's, it makes you more humble and more respective of other people. Yeah, well, it? exactly. It, it totally does. I remember one of the days I was breaking out really bad. I, I with acne and I was so upset about it and I was like man you're gonna see this on camera and I was like Emily this is not important like this is just not, this, this these are the egotistical things that you think of as actors and then again you get on set with these boys and you're like that doesn't matter yeah yeah it does so, yeah. And, and it's good yeah. that you can take it away from that you know and then you and it makes you a better person I think as well you know to work on, on projects like this and with individuals that are uh, so, so superb as these guys these boys are and, and still you know still will be the rest of their yeah. lives so um, just one last question if you don't mind what so what have you got coming up I know you've done obviously this a couple of years ago and it's shot and it's now yeah. coming out but so what's yeah. what have you got coming up or what have you just fish, wrapped up on anything like that or during the pandemic actually I started uh, taking up writing and I took some writing screenwriting courses at UCLA and I was able to develop a series as well as write two feature films. So I am in development with them um, and currently pitching to studios with some of the producers that I've worked on, which are on Jungle Cry in India. Yeah. Um, so knock on wood, I hope that that kind of goes into production and on the floors. But yeah, I've always wanted to add screenwriting to my resume. And so I'm focusing on that. And then I'm also spending a lot of my time in India, um, testing for roles and kind of seeing what the opportunities are there. Cause there's just so much content that comes out of India. You know, we're so used to Hollywood just being on the Western world and it just being Hollywood, but in India, it's not just Bollywood. There's South Indian films, which they call Tollywood. And then there's Punjabi films, Gujarati films. So, you know, there's just so much content being made in India and there's so many eyeballs and people that are dying for good, good content. So I do kind of want to, you know, establish myself in India and create content that's not silly and that's not mindless, but is very intentional and mindful and just good stories. Because at the end of the day, what we're realizing now more than ever is that good stories are doing well. So it doesn't matter what language it's in, like Money Heist, for example, or Squid Games, you know, those type of series are doing incredibly well because the story is so good and nobody knows these actors. So that whole era of, you know, hiring incredible actors or these A-list celebrities just to get the box office numbers up isn't really happening anymore. It's it's mostly about the story. So, again, I just want to kind of bring that to India and establish myself there. So, yeah, that's what's next. 
And I'm sure you will do because, Thanks. like I say, the, the story is the story is good enough to make a good film. I think that's what I want. For me, as a as a review, an interview, or whatever, I want to exactly. see something with a good story. It's irrelevant of what language is in, whatever, or like big names. Yeah, it's it's all about the story. Um, and with India being the second highest population on the planet, there's you know we past China. I, I have you know we just we are the number one population. No yeah. way, really? Yeah, yeah. It was like three weeks ago that we just surpassed them. Yeah. Bloody hell. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. You just told me something. Yeah, there are more Indians on the planet than than Chinese. Yeah. Just surpassed them. <laughs> <laughs> Population. I know. I'm seeing my growth on my social media and I'm like, there is no way that this is happening. But I, I, I'm i like, yeah, it makes sense. We, we have the highest population in the world. Maybe so. I should um, do more with it. More, more with the uh, social media in <laughs> India as well. Carl, I think it might not be a bad idea. <laughs> I know I need you to sing a recently. He's quite Omar and Malik, and he's um he sings in different languages. I know India's got loads of different languages, doesn't it? You know, and, and he's, he he speaks three, but then he he sings in about ten. But he's massive in India. You know, I mean, the Malik family they're quite big in the Bollywood world. Oh, are you talking about Anu Malik? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's he's a legend. He's been around. He was actually I just saw him two weeks ago at at breakfast, and he's such an incredible human being, so down to earth, and I feel like that. It, that is the essence of being successful in any career is just staying humble and grounded and down to earth. And you can still tell that to this day. Yeah. He's so. a nice guy. I really enjoyed talking to him. He's, he's a lovely guy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He is. Well, no, I need to do more in social media in India. So I will do, I will do. Yeah, exactly. Come on over. It's not All a bad. Right. Okay. Well, well, thank you for your time. I know we got there in the <laughs> end, but, um, but thank you for, I don't know what happened. So, but we are here now. So well, yeah. thank you. Thank and I look forward to talking to you again. So. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Bye.